Everyone knows about Incineroar and Landorus being busted in competitive Pokemon. At this point, they're more well known for their competitive viability than anything else. Here, maybe not anything else in the case of Incineroar, because Incineroar is in Smash Brothers. But it's not terribly hard for a casual player to point out which Pokemon might be top tiers just based off their stats and typing. But there's actually a whole lot of relatively unknown strong Pokemon in VGC. Their strength doesn't exactly come from their stats or move pools inherently, but because of the Pokemon that were around them being just the right pool of competition to make them strong picks. Whether this was for a single format or even a single tournament, I think it's about time we talked about Pokemon that you didn't know were good. If you enjoy this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because a lot of my viewers actually aren't. With that, let's get right into the video, but not before the gamer subs ad. It's 20 seconds long. If you want to skip it, just tap the right side of your screen three times and leave a like because I warned you. I I'm very cool like that. This channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. All right, so if you told me that plenty of Generation 1 Pokemon would be competitively viable in Generation 9, I'd assume you were referring to Pokemon like Gengar, Dragonite, Arcanine, or any other Pokemon that normal people like. And that's because these Pokemon still have pretty great stats, but the list also for some reason includes Electabuzz and Magmar, which is crazy because back in Generation 1 singles, these two weren't all that great, with Electabuzz in UU and Magmar in PU. They even both received evolutions in Generation 4, in the forms of Electivire and Magmortar, both of which ended up also not being too great. As it turns out though, granting these two access to follow me and the Eviolite item was really all it took to have them see viability. You see, despite their evolutions receiving considerable increases in offensive power, this was done at the expense of their speed stats, and even though their bulk also increased slightly, it wasn't enough to allow for either Electivire or Magmortar to accomplish much in a match. Eviolite Electabuzz not only has some impressive special bulk, but its base 105 speed stat allows for it to outspeed the majority of relevant Pokemon in the Regulation H metagame. Access to the ability Vital Spirit also means that it's one of very few Pokemon in the game which can redirect away spores and sleep powders while being immune to them itself, a role exclusive to Ogre Pond in previous metagames. While which Pokemon you pick from these two comes down to your team composition as they fill pretty similar roles, only Electabuzz has access to great speed control in Electroweb and Thunder Wave, while Magmar has the ability to burn opponents through Flame Body or its move Will-O-Wisp. Ultimately though, their viability returning solely due to a single move being introduced to their moveset is a testament as to just how big of a difference one small buff can make. But where these two were granted viability due to a buff, sometimes all it takes to make a Pokemon work is getting rid of literally every other option. <laughs> Such as the case with Golduck in VGC 2017. This was the one and only time I can recall people being scared to face this Pokemon. And no, the Cloud9 Golducks used to snipe Primal Groudon don't count. That was never good. It was just kind of cope. But the Alola Pokedex had a few things going which granted Golduck its strength. The first of these was the absence of its best competition at the time, Ludicolo. Where Ludicolo may have been slower and not hit quite as hard, it made up for this shortcoming with its grass typing and access to the move Fake Out. In its absence, players were searching for strong Swift Swim users to give a Water MZ and score easy KOs. As it turns out, options were pretty limited in the early days of Gen 7 VGC, and people weren't eager to use Relicanth, as that was also a Swift Swim attacker with a dual typing. So, Golduck ended up being the best option out of everything. Even though it only has base 95 special attack and 85 speed, this is more than enough in rain for it to outspeed and one-shot most of the metagame with Hydro Vortex. And since this was the generation that Pelipper got access to Drizzle, it meant Pelipper could set up its Tailwind to ensure that opposing Tailwind wouldn't allow for opponents to outspeed Golduck with Pokemon like Tapu Koko or Groundium Z Garchomp. Beyond this, the partner Pelipper also had access to Hurricane, which would allow for Golduck to be protected from opposing grass types like Tapu Bulu. I guess, since we're just going in generational order, at this point, we can move on to Articuno. Now, Articuno is always the first example I give to new players when I have to explain that just because a Pokemon is called, quote, legendary, it doesn't mean that it's actually any good. As an ice flying type, Articuno has some pretty awful weaknesses, including fire, steel, electric, and a times four weakness to rock, which makes it especially susceptible to getting one shot by rock slide in VGC and losing half of its health on switch in due to stealth rocks and singles. Besides all of that, Articuno is also cursed with Gen 1 stats. While stats of 90 
95 HP and 125 Special Defense aren't necessarily bad. It was one of the first Pokemon in a long line of defensively statted Ice types that just can't eat hits due to their typing. However, Generation 9 managed to redeem Articuno by not only making it a good offensive Ice Pokemon, but a really annoying one. At the 2024 Utrecht Special Event, Nikki already created an Articuno team which combined Snow Warning from Alolan Ninetales with a Choice Specs Terra Ice Snowcloak Articuno. By terrestrializing into a pure Ice type, Articuno was able to remove all of its flying weaknesses while maintaining the defense boost that Ice types gained from Snow. This also boosted the power of Choice Specs Blizzard through the roof, making it chunk everything for significant damage. Beyond that, Articuno also had RNG on its side, as Blizzard Spam was bound to freeze a Pokemon at some point, and Snowcloak gave Articuno a chance to to evade any attack, even attacks that really can't miss. For example, Mind's Eye makes it so you ignore the evasion instead of the opposing Pokemon. Blood Moon or Saluna should be able to hit Articuno, but Snowcloak for some reason overrides that and it can actually dodge that too. Pretty cool, huh? This offensive Articuno ended up winning the whole event and went on to be a dark horse of a team for the remainder of the format. The final and most surprising good Pokemon from Generation 1 is Eevee of all things. In Gen 7, Eevee gained access to an exclusive Z move called Extreme Evo Boost. This move would cause Eevee to gain plus two in all of its stats, doubling them. This was a crazy good development for Eevee, but Dondozo just calls it turn two. Point is, Eevee would then baton pass its stat boost to any other Pokemon on the team. Giovanni Costa piloted this Eevee team to multiple events in the 2017 season, where he paired it with multi-scale Dragonite and even a power trip Crocodile, which would one-shot everything with its 220 base power attack once all the stats were passed to it. This because the move Power Trip starts off at 20 base power and then gains an additional 20 for every single boost to a stat that it has. Since it has plus 2 in everything, this means that it gains 10 times 20 plus the original 20. 220 base power. It's pretty busted. While Eevee wasn't a common Pokemon by any means this season, Giovanni Costa managed to make it look easy and got great results at multiple events. Up next is Jumpluff. While it seems that Skiploom is the harbinger of champions in recent months, its evolution Jumpluff has never been a terribly great Pokemon. But in 2023, the stars aligned to create a single format and metagame where Jumpluff was the counter meta Pokemon that could dismantle entire teams. Jumpluff has a rather unfortunate stat spread that only Generation 2 was capable of creating. 75 HP, 55 attack, 70 defense, 55 special attack, 95 special defense, and 110 speed. What do you even do with this thing? It doesn't hit hard, it doesn't take hits well, and while it is fast, it's getting outsped by many of the top tier Pokemon that were present in the VGC 2023 Regulation C format. But players 45 Mice and Santino Tarquinio found a niche for it despite these traits. You see, Jumpluff has the ability Chlorophyll, which doubles its speed stat as long as Sun is active. With a base 110 speed stat, this means that Jumpluff in Sun is able to outrun even boost Booster Energy Iron Bundle, the fastest Pokemon in the format that saw high usage. Its high speed stat meant that Iron Bundle was able to toss out Icy Winds and slow the opposing team down, allowing its partners to outspeed and KO them. Jumpluff was able to not only outspeed Iron Bundle, but it was able to one-shot Iron Bundle consistently with Leaf Storm despite its low special attack stat since Iron Bundle had similarly low special defense. This meant that Jumpluff was able to safely click Tailwind for partner Great Tusk and Sleep Powder opposing Pokemon. It even ran Encore to lock Pokemon into a move like Protect or Swords Dance. While this team was created by Santino Tarquinio and 45 Mice, it was Joe Ugarte who ended up winning the Portland Regional Championships with it, giving Jumpluff a major victory in spite of how mediocre it really is on paper. Jumping ahead to a Gen 6 Pokemon, Vivillon always felt really off to me. Its access to Compound Eyes and Sleep Powder meant that it was basically just a better Butterfree since it had access to Hurricane where Butterfree did not, but it also has access to the extremely rare ability of Friend Guard. This ability causes the partner Pokemon to take damage reduced to three quarters as long as Vivillon is next to them. It also has access to great support moves like Tailwind and Rage Powder. A recent development in the VGC 2024 Regulation H metagame is that Vivillon is actually a great Pokemon for balanced teams, especially next to Garchomp. Because of its natural immunity to Earthquake, Garchomp is able to freely click the move next to it, while Vivillon cuts incoming damage, redirects attacks, and puts opposing Pokemon to sleep. It may not be the best attacker nor the best defensive Pokemon, but the stars just seem to be aligning for it to have a breakup performance soon. Finally, we have Bramblegast. Bramblegast is a pretty interesting Pokemon on paper. None of its stats are especially great. It's got pretty mediocre bulk at 55 HP, 70 defense, and 70 special defense, and it's only got 115 attack with a speed set of 90. But its power comes from its ability Wind Rider. As a grass ghost type, Bramblegast is weak to dark, ghost, and ice moves, but it most commonly expects to be hit with its fire and flying weaknesses. The ability Wind Rider not only grants Bramblegast immunity to wind moves such as Heat Wave, Hurricane, Bleak Wind Storm, and Blizzard, but 
but if these moves are targeted in the Bramblegast, it will also gain an attack boost. Bramblegast also gets an attack boost if Tailwind is active on its side of the field, making it an especially threatening offensive Pokemon with Poltergeist and Power Whip at plus one attack. As a ghost type, it's not able to be faked out, so Focus Sash Bramblegast is practically guaranteed to get at least one powerful move off before going down. In the format of Regulation E, which was played at the 2023 World Championships, Emilio Forbes piloted a Bramblegast with Focus Sash, Terra Ghost Terra Blast, Power Whip, Shadow Sneak, and Strength Sap. This format saw heavy usage of the Tornadus Urshifu duo, which couldn't hit Bramblegast with anything other than a resisted Surging Strikes. Bramblegast not only walled and got attack boost from opposing Tornadus, but it could threaten a one-shot against the opposing Urshifu and pick up free KOs with plus one Shadow Sneak into Fluttermane, which would outspeed it if it weren't for the priority on the move. Unfortunately, the World Championships that year had one of the most notorious technical difficulties of any event. In top 16 of the 2023 World Championships, many of the matches simultaneously disconnected for some reason, causing Emilio Forbes to have to play Sudden Death. You see, in Sudden Death, the rule is the first Pokemon to have any other Pokemon get KO'd loses. Normally, losing a Pokemon first in a match doesn't mean you're going to lose the whole game. It can even be done strategically to put you in a better position down the road. But in Sudden Death, the only thing that matters is not losing a single Pokemon. Emilio Forbes ended up losing his set in Sudden Death, eliminating him in top 16, leaving him at 13th overall. His performance in this tournament was astounding, and had it not been for this unfortunate mishap, there was a chance we could have had Emilio Forbes and Bramblegast win the whole event this year. But this isn't the reality that we live in, so we can only acknowledge how great of a a game call this was and how great of a player Emilio Forbes is. But those are just some Pokemon that I bet you didn't know were actually good. Are there any that I missed? I, I could have talked about Pokemon like Shedinja or Ditto in this video, but it would have been redundant because I've actually talked about them in a previous video about good gimmick Pokemon. So you can check that out right after this if you got time. I'm sure there's a Pokemon I forgot to talk about though, so if you think of one, let me know in the comment section below. And please, you know, I this is a VGC video, so there are gonna be people there, there are gonna be people who are like, did you know Blaziken's great? It's banned to Ubers, and I'm like, no, it's it's we're talking about VGC right now. Like I talked about Stealth Rocks with the Articuno, but you know, whatever. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. And if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Ant Media UK, Avatar67, and Kayla Thompson for the generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which are in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!